Good evening, sports fans, and we are doing an impromptu TV party tonight extra for Bellator, Fedor versus Bader. We're just going to bring you the main event, the uh, finals of their Grand Prix, as they're calling it, their heavyweight Grand Prix, between the last emperor, Fedor Emelianenko, and former UFC light heavyweight, Ryan Darth Bader. For the uh, record, Bader is the current Bellator light heavyweight champion. Good for him. That voice you hear, of course, is the host of the 411 Ground and Pound radio show and the host of Damn You Hollywood and a pretty cool fruit who really knows where his towel's at, Mr. Robert Winfrey. How do you do, sir? Ah, uh, sick. Thanks, but. I haven't watched a live Fedor fight in a couple of years, and he's been winning, so I fully expect him to lose now that I'm actually watching. Yeah, that's about how this that's about how this goes, if I remember correctly. Um, when I first started watching MMA, he was the undefeated last emperor killing machine of pride, and then he got sat on by uh, what's his face, um, Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Yes, uh, joining me also. Uh, the third man to our uh, commentary team here is the punchy pugilist, Mr. Toxic Masculinity, a man who just uh, concluded our first TV party tonight extra for Keith Thurman versus Josezito Lopez. Ladies and gentlemen, Pat Mullen, how do you do, sir? I am the number seven ranked heavyweight in Bellator. <laughs> I believe it. To shoot, guys. <laughs> I, I know because I turned in my ranking cards. He's there. All right, Robert, fill me in here. I haven't been keeping up with Bellator for uh, I barely quite some... acknowledge Bellator's existence, <laughs> just for the record. I hate Are... them. I would imagine, though, you have a better sense of who's won what in this tournament. Like How we how did we get to Fedor versus Bader? Well, first round, Fedor defeated Frank Mir. Uh, first round knockout in a... It wasn't the worst fight in the world. Then he beat Chael Sonnen, yes, you heard that correctly, at heavyweight, in the second in the second round to advance to the finals. Bader, by contrast, beat King Mo, a blown-up middleweight, and then fought uh, Matt Mitrione, and, beat, and he knocked out King Mo. Then he beats Matt Mitrione, I believe it was by decision, uh, in, the, in the semifinals. We get some highlights right now on the broadcast. I'm gonna have to double check that fi- that because I can't remember if he he might have finished him with uh with something because Matt Mitrion on the ground really kind of sucks. But yeah, so now we have that was decision. So at the moment we have a light heavyweight. Though in fairness to Ryan Bader, he's an enormous light heavyweight. I mean they they took pictures with the pictures of him and King Mo next to each other and. That right after Bader's fight, I forget which one this was that he won, but Bader is like, or was it Mo that won? And Bader's like, and so Bader's in shoes and Mo. No, it's the other way around because like Bader's barefoot, Mo's in shoes, and Bader's still like four inches taller than him. What I mean, possessed, Bader's an enormous guy. What possessed them to put King Mo of all people in a heavyweight tournament? I mean, I he's the, the only guy they have with name recognition. Fair enough. Go ahead, Pat. I was going to say, I reiterate, I am the number seven ranked heavyweight in Bellator. <laughs> All right. Speaking of heavyweights in Bellator. It's not a division. Uh, earlier in the evening, no, we did not, we did not uh, do a commentary for this fight. Frankly, folks, I didn't even know this was happening until uh, I was posting the show for uh, Thurman versus Lopez, and I happened to see an advertisement for Paramount Network brings you Bellator, Fedor versus uh, Bader. And I and Pat and I looked at each other virtually and said, hey, want to go again? Um, so, yeah, we didn't see it. But apparently Jack Swagger, real name Jake Hager, made his MMA debut tonight. He won by arm triangle against uh, Soupy McTomatican, as I believe his name is. Yeah, he was just, once again that Jack Swagger is superior to Bobby Lashley in every way. Yeah, he was just coming off of that fight with Boxcar Willie. <laughs> and uh, that was a barn burner, man. <laughs> I mean, literally, it was contested in a burning barn because we couldn't find another venue. Jack Swagger, of course, was the uh, world heavyweight champion in the WWE, the ECW champion, and uh, now he's in MMA. 
And the question remains, do you think he will be successful uh, at this stage of the game in MMA, Robert? I mean, define successful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, look, he won a fight. Have it. Well, let's, be, let's be clear. There's a significant amount of success that comes with just winning a damn fight. Maintain a winning record and continue to get paid a halfway decent amount of money. How about that? Does that is that a, is that a good definition of success? Fair enough. In Bellator, yes. You ever? Here's a stupid question. You ever think Jake Hager will make it into the UFC? No, probably not. You don't think so with their with their hunger to create you know circus performances so that they can get uh, ratings. You don't think if he maintains a winning record, they'll uh, they'll they'll sign him and try to forget the fact they ever signed CM Punk. I think CM Punk is why they will not sign him. Yeah. Well, look, look, they're batting 500 with former professional wrestlers in the (laughs) WWE competing in their ranks. They lost nothing but money on CM Punk. I mean, there was a bit of novelty around his debut, but the fight was over quickly and he didn't draw a lot of interest, so they booked him again. He performed in one of the the worst... It was my worst fight of the year for 2018. I... I, I'm prepared to hear arguments for Ngannou versus Lewis based on relative skill level and expectations, as opposed to a, you know two guys who were 0 and 1 professionally. But it also that event also took place in the UFC, so I'm holding it to the UFC standard. It was the worst fight of all last year. It was the it was terrible. I've seen regional MMA locally. Like, I watched like local access television at two in the morning when I can't sleep. That was significantly better than that. Brock Lesnar wound up being a boon for them. Fine. Punk was a massive drain on them financially. He didn't even drive buy rates for the event that he fought for his second fight because that was uh, 225, I want to say. That was, uh, it was uh, headlined by Romero Cyborg. Whitaker, too. Oh, that's right. I, I, I forgot that, that was on there. That was a good fight. That was the best fight of last year. It's a great. I love that fight. Was Cyborg on that card? I want to say she was. Uh, no, of, uh, I think I'm, maybe I'm thinking of Holly and uh, Megan Anderson. Yeah, it was Holly and Megan that was on that card. So no, I don't think they'll go for Jack Swagger. It's unless he gets. Let me put a let me put a big caveat. He's one and zero. If in the next three years he does not age terribly, he gets to say ten and zero. Maybe there's a real outside chance. I don't expect him to, but I mean, let's let's face facts here. He's he's fighting in heavyweight in the heavyweight division. Not exactly a dearth of talent there. How old is well, there he? is a dearth of talent. 35, 36? I want to say uh, let me see. 30s. He is 36. Yeah, geez. Yeah, I, so I, I... No, no, he's... You're telling me there's a giant wellspring of talent in heavyweight? I mean, I, we do... No, <laughs> we but do. I also, you're also dealing with... I saw the last heavyweight fight. I saw, <laughs> I saw who you know they got to contend for the title. You can't make the argument there's a great wellspring of talent at heavyweight. You just can't. Oh, I'm not. I'm just saying I don't think they'll sign him. Those are two very different things. All right. Well, did, did I not use the word dearth correctly? I said there's not. You, know, you the... did. You said there's not a dearth. A dearth is a severe lack of. There is a massive dearth of talent at heavyweight. I stand corrected. Um. And any, yeah, the, all right. Vocabulary words aside, there's no talent at heavyweight. There's plenty of room for Jack Swagger. That's the point that I was trying to make. Okay, I'm, again, and do I think he could have success in the UFC? Probably a little. I just don't think they will. Which was um, the substance of your question. That being said, now here's a silly question for you. Let us assume this goes the way we think it's going to, and Ryan Bader knocks out uh, Fedor. Do you think uh, the UFC makes moves to bring him back at heavyweight? Oh, look, they've got lightsabers. <laughs> not, not at heavyweight. I love, I, I, I love Bellator's presentation. I know it's hokey and WWE-like and over the top, but you know me, I love a good circus. Yeah, I can't stand Bellator. I mean, I'm only watching this. I'm, I'm only watching this muted because I know if I had to listen to Mike Goldberg and Big John McCarthy for about ten consecutive seconds, my head would explode. The beautiful Ariani. Is this is this a, a, a foreshadowing though? Because you have Vader and then you have the Emperor. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. 
You think this ends with Bader picking up Fedor and throwing him over the cage? A very good chance of that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to count it out. <laughs> God, I hope so. Uh, I hope no, not. Look, that's I don't... because I'm a degenerate gambler. Fair enough. No, I don't think, to answer your question, no, I don't think they do. I think Bader's... Let me put it like this. I think Bader's confidence in himself is kind of shot at the UFC level. I mean, he had a, he was in a position... Is Frank Trigg a referee? Yes. Has been for at least 18 months, two years. I, I was like, why is Frank Trigg looking at his mouthpiece? Oh, wait, he's a referee. <laughs> and there's our yeah, other favorite yeah. referee, Yosemite Sam. Mike Beltron, baby. Were no we... relation to Joey or Carlos. Who we were talking to Alexis Haina when we were trying to tell her to go look this guy up, and she was like, "Oh, I've seen plenty of cosplayers that look like that." Was that was that her? Something like that. Okay. Wow, Bader finally got that stupid Phoenix tattoo on his shoulder finished. Good for him, man. Because that thing looked awful. <laughs> so to give you guys a heads up on some of the odds of this fight, the straight money line: Fedor is a two to one underdog. Ryan Bader is a two and a half to one favorite. Wow. Will the fight right. will the fight go the distance? Four to one odds say underdog odds for yes. <coughs> five one to five odds the answer is no. Yeah, I I cannot. Uh, that that's also about fair. There's there's almost no chance this goes the distance. Neither of so, these guys are really built for twenty five minutes at this point. So I bet twenty five dollars on that to win four dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> It's a safe bet, if nothing else. That that yeah. is the, like this fight not going the distance is probably the safest bet of the evening. Now, as we see Fedor walk out to much fanfare, I bet on Fedor on what's called a double chance bet, which is they give you two methods of victory, which obviously the odds are lessened at that point. However, since he is a substantial underdog, and Ryan Bader is Ryan Bader, and I'm on a roll, I said, "What the hey?" So, I bet twenty dollars at. Two, two at plus two twenty odds that Fedor will win by KO slash TKO or submission. You get any? You, you get any favors for that for like doctor stoppage? TKO falls under doctor stoppage, so okay. Am I alone in thinking they missed an opportunity by not having him ride out on a Russian tank? I mean, you couldn't actually fit it into the arena. And it's been done. I think if you're going to make him do something uber Russian, you have him burn the entrance way behind him on the way. <laughs> I mean, I, I would I was going to go with uh, the, the old Rocky Four thing, where just behind him is just a giant portrait of his face over the Russian flag. And Maybe. Fedor is in in good shape for even Fedor. He looks he does. Like he's, always, he's always been a little you know frumpy, a little bit love handily. But he's pretty trim up and he's pretty solid. Uh, he's got he's got a little bit of a dad who hits the gym four days a week. Dad bod. Yeah, I was gonna say he's not looking as pudgy as he did the first time around in Strike Force. Yeah, and, and I mean even against Chael, he looked pretty soft. Yeah, uh, and now he, he doesn't. Credit to Bader. Bader's always, if nothing else, Bader always looks just carved out of stone. Yeah, man. I, again, you look at that guy. He's he could he's kind of in the Daniel Cormier model where he can fight at both 205 and heavyweight and be very competitive in both and not just because both divisions are like wastelands of talent and opportunity. Certainly doesn't hurt though. Not at all. But uh, I, I think the other reason you won't see Bader brought back into the UFC is I think he's happier in Bellator. I don't think he felt promotionally well treated by the UFC and I don't think he competed all that. I mean he, for a guy who had a very winning UFC record he also stumbled at the at every crucial juncture of his career. Yeah, I mean, never, I mean, never got over the hump of being just okay. I, I mean, famously, you know, you have the Tito Ortiz loss, which was, while embarrassing and hilarious, <laughs> is not the mo is not actually the most troubling of those. Uh, I mean, then you know he, he loses to John Jones, and fine, John's the best. For me, it's more the Machida loss that's really where, kind of endemic of his never really going to get over the hump in, in that where company. He, where he ran into a punch. Yes. <laughs> Did like, Bader actually? That, comp yeah, I know you said he fought John Jones, but I don't think was John Jones. I don't think John Jones was champion at that point. I'm pretty sure. No, no, no that, that was that was to determine who the next guy was going to be. Okay. Yeah, because that so, was supposed to be Jack. That was supposed to be uh, Shogun versus Evans. Then uh, Evans fell out, 
and it was either going to be Jones or Bader, depending on who won their fight. Because Bader, Jones... Bader never competed for the title then. No. No. Always, always faltered, as Rob said, when it was a matchup where had he won this, he's either next fighting for the title or one fight away from the title. Always managed to pull defeat from the jaws of victory. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I mean, I, I maintain that that loss to Machida was, I don't want to say a work, because thats I don't think that's accurate, but... I think it was just, you know, indicative of his lack of understanding of how to fight. Well, that well also, and this is important. That was there. That was a, a UFC on Fox event. Yep. And it, it was on the main card. And if you look at every other fight on the main card, Mike Swick and Demarcus Johnson, lower level guys, but they went out and they threw down. Joe Lozon and Jamie Varner was pretty crazy, especially for those because those two are pretty. Those are pretty crazy fighters. And then you get to Machida and Bader, and the whole first round of that fight was nothing. I maintain somebody told Bader's corner between rounds, get him to do something. We don't care if he loses. But we can't have a 15-minute Machida fight leading into Shogun versus Vera. I believe... I I actually remember that conversation after that fight. I I may have still been doing the 4-1 ground and punch, and I believe we talked about that, about how he didn't necessarily throw the fight, but he threw caution to the wind to try to make it interesting, and then he ate a kick or ate a punch or whatever it was. He ate a punch, ran right into it. <laughs> he all, Oh, God, the Teixeira loss was so bad for him, too. Oh, yeah, he lost to Glover. That ain't good. Well, I mean, Glover's Glover's a good old war horse, but considering how favored he was in that fight, and how, I mean, he was winning. He was piecing Glover up on the feet and then just got sloppy and got clipped, and then he went on the big winning streak, and then guess who what? You ran into Anthony Johnson, and he fought who he fought the dumbest way possible. Here's Again, Okay, so we're, we're talking about this, and as they play the anthem and try to scare Fedor with pro-American stuff here. Um, <laughs> Fedor doesn't scare, guys. <laughs> yeah. Here's my reasoning for betting on Fedor, and because I'm explaining this, he'll lose. Ryan Bader, for everything he does, okay, terrific double leg takedowns, dominant in top position, he doesn't get hit all that well. And in his win streak that he's been on, you look at the guys he's beaten, with the exception of Matt Mitrione, none of them hit particularly hard. And Matt Mitrione is not somebody you have to worry about uh, defending your double legs and putting you in trouble. So, Vader could do whatever he wanted to do there, and took him down with relative ease, held him down, controlled him. Moe's a blown up middleweight with a bad chin. Linton Vasil is really not anything. Phil Davis is a guy very much in the vein of Vader, who is a good offensive wrestler, who fought a better offensive wrestler and doesn't offer much on the feet. And when, he's not, when he's not blinding people. Hold on, hold on. That fight also sucked out loud. If, for those of you who don't remember their UFC bout, be grateful. It was 15 minutes of crap. So Bellator matched them back up because uh, Davis was the champion. 24. Uh, and, and brought Bader in. And I think a lot of us, and I mean, credit. I'll give credit to Bellator's production for acknowledging that their first fight sucked. <coughs> and saying both guys are saying it's not going to be like that this time. It was like that the next time, just for 25 minutes instead of 15. <laughs> and it's interesting, interesting note on the tail of the tape they just showed, which I didn't realize because of the height differential. Uh, Fedor's got a two-inch reach advantage. Bader's got short arms for a guy his height. I mean, he, he's wide through the shoulders, but he does not have a lot of length on him for a guy his height. Well, no, I think so also when, you're when, he... to, when you're trying to throw that right hand from the back end, he's got to really reach for it versus Fedor, who does not. I was going to say, this guy, you know, his victories seem to have come from, you know, throwing those those hard, short hooks. So, you know, when you look at so when you look at his, uh, you know, the, the power he's got in his shoulders and his arms, it's, it's no wonder. I think that, but here's the thing. I think that if Fedor can hit him on the chin, he can hurt him. And obviously, Bader is a much better offensive wrestler. But in terms of submission grappling, Fedor still has tricks at his disposal where if you allow him on top for even a moment, he can take full advantage of it and tie you into something. He doesn't have great top control, and Bader can probably buck him, but if you give him an arm or you give him your neck, he's going to do everything he can to finish it. Am I I wrong in saying that people tend to forget, though, that like Fedor is no slouch on the ground? 
that you know it's that, because he hasn't fought that way in so long. And, and the guys he's fighting, uh, Brian Bader is a much better grappler than probably anybody Fedor has seen in a while, and that includes in, in terms of. In terms of all-around grappling, absolutely. If we're talking pure jujitsu, Mir's better, but Mir's yeah. wrestling is terrible. Yeah. Do you think Fader still has post-traumatic stress disorder from his fight with Verdun? No. <laughs> I, think I don't think reason... you can crack Fedor mentally. Yeah, I, I think don't. the whole reason he's fought that way is because he can't have PTSD. So <laughs> if he makes a mistake, it doesn't stick with him. He just goes right on about business. And here we go. No, I... I... For me, this comes down to whether or not Bader can establish top control or whether or not he's too loose, because Fedor's... A lot of Fedor's success on the ground has always been constant motion. It's scrambles. It's, you know, yes. the rocking back and forth, the explosions. All right. 100%. It's what we as saw they, with Randall and Coleman. As they and say, the, the here we go. The slower it's down, yeah, yeah, the slower the pace the fight is on the ground, the better it is for his opponent, the faster it is, the better it is for him. I mean, he overwhelmed Noguera on the ground just right. by keeping active constantly when Noguera was unbeatable. We are in round one of five, first 15 seconds into it, both men feeling each other out, uh, some fainting, trying to measure each other up. No, up. Oh, finally somebody threw something. Bader threw, <laughs> Bader threw a left. Didn't hit it. Up. Oh, for fuck's Bader. sake! <laughs> <laughs> you were surprised? <laughs> I can't even call it. Somebody else do it. <laughs> Robert, you want to take this one? I'm too busy laughing. No, no. Like, <laughs> again, like why? Uh, again, I'm, I'm surprised you were. I'm surprised you're laughing more than anything. <laughs> because Bellator. Hang on, okay. I just want to watch a replay. Hang on. <laughs> well, we should actually tell people what just happened. This is supposed Go to be a, com- a live commentary. <laughs> they can just watch the GIF. <laughs> uh, this, this is not gonna. This is not gonna take long. God, uh, Bader's striking posture is so bad. His chin is right there. Uh, For a guy as, lo- as seasoned as he is, he should not have that kind of head position. Did you yeah, hear? I, I did guess you... my cable, my cable's a little bit behind you guys because I, I saw it after. And I, uh, once I heard Mark say that, I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> okay, so Bader threw this really awkward left, and it hit Fedor right in the chin, and he went down like a cartoon character. <laughs> I mean, look, Fedor's chin has been shot for a while. Like, Bader, Bader, ju- right Bader jumped on him again. Uh, you know, one or two ground and pound, and that was the end of that. Man, there that it is. went exactly as expected. <laughs> God. My God, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, that sounds... All, all I can think of... I've been watching. I've been listening to a couple of the Bruce Pritchard's uh, older shows, mm-hmm. and uh, the the one about Doink I listened to, and all I can hear in my head is Rene Goulet saying, "The clown is down. The clown <laughs> is down." Yeah, I don't know if you guys heard it after Fedor went down and they stopped the fight, but there was a gunshot in the distance. I believe that was Scott Coker. They <laughs> no, 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 no. That's that's absolutely not accurate. Oh yeah, no, this is what they want. No, no, no. They, like, look, Bader's their champ, champ now. Mm-hmm. Um, he's gonna fight probably Vitaly Minikov, which is a much more intriguing fight because Minikov is that is. Uh, damn right, you know, I, I'm a, I love Fedor. I've been a Fedor fan for a lot of years. I just think he's over the hill at this point. Uh, Minikov, by contrast, I mean, he left. He he was stripped of the title simply because he. Uh, he didn't like the way Bellator was treating him. Uh, he wound up fighting in Russia. I think he had visa issues as well at the time, but uh, Minikov's a legitimately uh, top-tier heavyweight. And is, him... is, he the one, is he the one who just beat up Czech Congo? I believe so. Hang on, let me double-check. I want to make sure I'm Did you, did you read my latest fact or fiction? I actually referenced Pat Barry versus Czech Congo. You did. Um... Minikov has not fought Czech Congo. No, he's going to fight Czech Congo. Are you That's sure? The upcoming one. Yes. No, 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 see... no, no, you're right, you're right. Bellator 115. Oh, okay. uh, unanimous That's... decision. He just beat him up for all, all five rounds. Yeah, it was this hilarious. Is couple, this is a couple years back, right? Yeah, this was 2014. Yeah, Minikov's 21-0. and 0. Uh, Yeah, he was getting some play uh, at one point in time as far as Somebody they thought could go over to the UFC. No, he was, yeah, he was absolutely legitimate. Uh, again, B- 
the champion uh, again undefeated. He won it from Volkov. Uh, stopped Volkov in the first, which was a big deal at the time because Volkov was looking pretty good. And Volkov is now. Uh, what is he doing now? In he's the UFC, like, he's like snatching, top five, snatching right? defeat from the jaws of victory, as it were. He's like top five, with, even though uh, Derek Lewis's balls got hot, right? Yeah. God, I am so pissed at him for that. I'm so pissed at Volkov for that fight because he had that fight in the palm of his hand and threw it away in the last at the end of the at the end of the last round. I I was so annoyed with that. So the good news is, even though I lost on the Fedor bet, I did win on the not going the distance bet. Yeah, again, that bet. was that, that was the oh. safest bet you could have made on this fight. I can't believe that didn't even last a minute. Jesus Christ! Why are you surprised? It lasted four punches. <laughs> he, hit the, he, hit, he hit him with that initial left hook, hit him with the uppercut as he tried to do the Undertaker sit-up, hit two hammer fists, and that was it. And now he is your heavyweight and your light heavyweight champion. Good for Ryan Bader. Sometimes it's nice to be a big fish in a small pond. It really is. Yeah, I hope he's getting paid well. Yeah, I he's hope got that a good deal. The front row is his because she was good looking. Yeah, she was a hot piece of uh, ass. He's got, a, he's got an attractive wife. Good for you, Ryan Bader. So, you know, I made the joke about Fedor. And, it's you better know, to play in TNA than it is to serve in WWE sometimes, I guess. Yep. Um, but I, I, I guess I laugh and it's like, oh, what did you expect? Like, they keep banking on Fedor and he keeps not fulfilling. The, no, their no. Expectations. Let, let me hang on. Let me. Um, this is this is basically what they wanted. They wanted Bader and Fedor in the finals. This this was essentially the end game of this plan. Was those two, and then whoever won, they can do stuff with. Okay, so I they won no matter what happened. Yeah. Once they got to this point, they were fine. Yeah, as long as he didn't lose in the first round by having a giant Brazilian sit on him. Well, I mean, he fought Frank Mir, so it was a giant American. Either way. All right, guys. Um, Robert, go ahead and do your plugs real quick. Uh, not a whole lot. Um, tomorrow we'll be recording the 411 Ground and Pound radio show. Uh, we'll just be looking at the week in news, which there wasn't a whole lot of. Are you going to talk about uh, this? Probably not. <laughs> I, 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 I don't acknowledge Bellator's existence uh, as a matter of course. Okay. Well, it was fun to have you on here anyway. Well, uh, hang on. We'll also be previewing uh, the Brazil card for next Saturday, which is a damn good card. Um, you've got the rematch between Rivera and Marais. Or not Rivera and Marais, excuse me. Austin Sao and Marais as your main event. you got Jose Aldo and Hanato Mo- Moicano. Uh, Damian Maia. Is fi- um, Charles Oliveira and David Tamer is a darn good fight. Uh, Justin Ledet's fighting Johnny Walker. That should be something. It's a it's a surprisingly deep card for something that's exclusively on ESPN Plus coming to you from Brazil. Uh, it's a darn good card. All right, uh, Pat, go ahead and do whatever plugs you got. So you can listen to Mark and myself call our previous fight entry. Uh, Keith Thurman defending the WBA Welterweight Championship against Tosacito Lopez. You can hear me this week on the final. Pigskin Pick'em Podcast of the Year with Jesse Starcher, where I dominated, never looked back, beat everybody soundly as I said I would at the very beginning. The proof is there. Jesse will acknowledge it. We'll talk Super Bowl. We'll talk predictions. We'll talk major stories leading in and leading out of this week. You can hear me on that. You can hear Mark and myself talk Fuller House on the latest edition of TV Party that we recorded this week. Look forward to that. Season 4 is up and ready. God, Fedor's chin might be worse than Chuck's at this point. Uh, <laughs> and that's saying something. That. Well, it's one thing to get knocked out by Ron Bader. Quite another thing. Another to get knocked out standing by Tito Ortiz. That's true. And yeah. his uh, consistently hurt vagina. All right, folks. We did. This was impromptu. We didn't plan on it. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I had a good laugh. So that made it worth it. So for Robert Winfrey of 401mania.com, uh, and the 401 Ground and Pound radio show for Pat Mullen, the to- Mr. Toxic Masculinity. I'm your man, data reporter, Mr. Mark Rattledge. We hope to in- we hope to offend you sometime in the future. <laughs>